Hey, it's been a minute. I fell off the Grey's Anatomy carousel again. Surprise, surprise. To be honest, I fell off the carousel of every other show I was reacting to on my channel. But here I am with a new mic. Not that there is an older mic. This is the only mic I've ever owned. But here I am with a mic. A new phone. Same old me. The reason I fell off the carousel is because I was initially hesitant to continue watching Grey's Anatomy without the grey in it. I was also resistant to the idea of the new interns taking over our house. You know, the house we've all grown up in, Meredith's house. But I did binge watch the remainder of season 19 and season 20 recently. And while the first couple episodes after Meredith's farewell were, in my opinion, a little boring, I have to admit, the show did gain momentum, the interns did grow on me. There were quite a few storylines I actually enjoyed. I have a list. I wouldn't be me if I didn't make a list. Okay, in no particular order, Nick and Adams and their struggle with ADHD. I think it was really refreshing and eye-opening to see how they portrayed adults struggling with ADHD, living with ADHD. The abortion care episodes. Ooh, I loved the abortion care episodes. I mean, it is truly sad that the US Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade and that abortion care across the United States has been compromised. But those episodes, like I loved the drama, I loved the cinematography, that one particular continuous shot when all of them are in the emergency room, like that is that the, is kind, the of kind of shit, shit I, I live, live for. for. Altman being chief, it actually doesn't come as a surprise to me that Altman makes a really good chief, that the shoe just fits for her. She's of course served in the army, she's been a kick-ass cardiothoracic surgeon for decades, she's the one who mentored Christina, so of course she has the leadership skills and the crisis management skills that are required for chief of surgery. Amelia dealing with her abandonment issues and getting herself out of her spiral before it got worse. I've said this like time and time again that Amelia's character growth has been so prominent throughout the show and it is just one of the joys of watching Grey's Anatomy to see how far that woman has come. It was one thing when Meredith left but when Maggie also left it made sense that her abandonment issues started creeping up again and as somebody who also struggles with abandonment issues in their life I totally empathize with Amelia but I loved how Addison gave Amelia an earful and that she was able to pull herself out of her spiral before she got sucked further into it. Luna's hearing loss. I can't recall if we've had a character on Grey's Anatomy in the past who was deaf or hard of hearing. But it was nice to see how Jo handled that diagnosis. She was very matter of fact about it, that there are technological advancements that they have access to that will minimize Luna's impairment. Schmidt being more of a boss. It took me a while to get used to the mean Schmidt, the senior resident Schmidt, because I have this like inescapable picture in my mind of the intern Schmidt who dropped his glasses inside a body cavity. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god! But I like his character development as well. Although I do think he was being a bit of a bitch to the interns. Jules's housemate. Oh, Maxine. My girl, Maxine. I just think her addition to the show is just... It brings me so much joy. I loved hearing about her past experiences and she's just like such a joy to watch on screen. And I did get scared that the writers would kill her off. But thankfully, just because the character is old, that doesn't mean we have to kill them off. So for now, she's alive. But you never know with this show. But I really hope we get to see more of her in season 21. Maggie claiming her greatness, her departure actually came as a shock to me. It's kind of interesting that before her, Christina was on the show for 10 years and I didn't even realize until I read this online that Maggie's character had also been on the show for 10 years before she departed. She was in an unhappy marriage, so she took a stand for herself and pursued her greatness. Helm and Yasuda, even though they were quite short-lived as a couple together, it was refreshing to see Helm being with somebody who was also into her instead of fantasizing or fangirling over a straight woman. Meredith. Link and Joe. It's not an uncommon storyline for two best friends to end up together. But I think I've always felt that there was a spark between Joe and Link. It's sort of how I always felt that there was a spark between Teddy and Owen and that they were meant to end up together. So like I am all 
for the joint link ship. In addition to Addison's return, I also loved Arizona's return. And the fact that she came back as this badass surgeon, I mean she was always a badass surgeon, but she came back as an even greater surgeon who patients would travel state lines for so that she could perform brain surgery on their fetus. Daily becoming the residency director. Oh, when she walked into that room and said, I have I five have rooms. rooms. I have five rules. I died. A part of me died and came alive at the same time. It's come full circle for Bailey in the sense that we started the show with her mentoring and nurturing the magic interns. It's kind of heartwarming to see her mentor and nurture a new generation of interns. And last but not the least, I loved Loved. loved the interns standing up to Catherine, Bailey standing up to Catherine, Meredith standing up to Catherine. Catherine, I love her, but she has her moments when she becomes really bitchy and she becomes insufferable and she goes on a power trip. So speaking of the interns and Bailey and Meredith standing up to Catherine, I know there's going to be a lot of drama in the first episode of season 21 and I can't wait to get into it. Without any further ado, let's begin. Can you replace me? Do you know how many doctors I have replaced in my career? You're done here, Dr. Bailey. Goodbye. Just like that. This profession is a calling, not a business. When was the last time you actually stepped into an OR? Oh, oh shit. shit. Oh shit. You strut around and straighten Richard's tie while the rest of us do the work. No, I do the work. They do the work. Oh, Bailey is not holding back. You think you're God's gift to this hospital? Please, you're just another doctor. Oh, it's coming. Oh, it's coming. Oh, it's coming. Eventually, a reflex is triggered. You had the dream again? What happened this time? I slapped him. Are you Are joking? You joking? All of that build up with the promo and the trailer and the slap is a dream? Oh, come on. Yeah, they had us the first half, I'm not gonna lie. They shut down the whole bridge for the protesters. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You sure? You look weird. Thanks. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that she's also pregnant. Who are you stalking now? That's his ex-fiance. Dr. Meredith Gray? Oh no, she's been served. It's an injunction from the Fox Foundation. If you don't respond, you could be held in contempt of the court. Wait, he was cute. Can you serve me some papers? Huh, baby? Hey, mama. Hey, hey mama's, mama's boy. boy. When you texted me about Meredith, you failed to mention you fired Hunt and Altman, mom. Well, don't forget about Shepard and Bailey. If they can't respect the foundation, then they shouldn't work for it. Oh, I really hope Jackson can pull Catherine out of her own ass and talk some sense into her because somebody needs to end this power trip. Did you read their abstract at least? Of course I did. Data seems pretty incredible. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're not gonna stop until we get it all back. Like you would think that as a woman who's a boss, a woman who's a badass surgeon, a woman who owns and leads a multi-million dollar, if not billion dollar company, that she would not force other surgeons who are also women to let go of their groundbreaking research. I heard a rumor that the new residency director starts today. Oh, well, good. I forgot Sydney Heron is coming back. She's going to be the new residency director. You know what? I want to watch that. I want to watch Sydney Heron and her unfailing optimism just take over the interns. And at this moment, as I would eventually realize, not only did my mic stop recording, thank you very much, but my screen recording also stopped recording the audio, which is why it's taken me even longer to edit this video, because I've had to screen record the scenes I reacted to again, and then sync the audio to the clips. So just wanted to give a heads up that for the remainder of this video, the audio will sound slightly different. I wish the new person best of luck. Y'all need it. Oh, she's not new. 
she's not you. I generally always adored Sydney's character. There was this one really empowering scene. I can't recall if it was the interns that she stood up to or was it Bailey or was it an attending? But she sort of gave it to somebody and it was like such a badass scene. Dr. Yang wanted to be sure that the perky little bimbo cheerleader wasn't in here trying to kill a patient, am I right? Now, unlike Dr. Karev, kindness and compassion are very high on her list of priorities, but a little bone saw action? <laughs> Maybe that'll earn me some respect, am I right? Nervous? Uh, about the new boss. Right. No, no. Yeah, they also had a moment. Hi, I am Sydney Heron. I am your new fearless leader. I mean, not new, new. You know, I did my residency here. Who's ready to heal with love? The best thing about watching a show that's 21 seasons in is that there's always hope to see older characters come back. Thanks to your wife, my department's down, Altman, and I'm running Owen's service. And I'm the interim chief. Oh, he's back to filling those shoes, even though it's interim chief. But damn, Richard's back to being chief. Are you avoiding the OR after what happened with Garrett? Yes, it was a bad outcome, but that's just what it was. Not a sign of anything else. You know, there have been moments in the past on the show when Richard has thought about taking a step back, but I just get the feeling that this time it might be serious. A part of me gets the feeling that he might end up getting Alzheimer's and then Catherine might be forced to trust Meredith and Amelia so that their research and their breakthrough can help Richard. Maybe I'm just getting ahead of myself, but... You remind me of myself when I was an intern, Dr. Miller. Smelling inquisitive, you know, direct air of mystery oh she instantly recognizes that bubbly tone of voice miranda bailey come here come <laughs> oh. 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 Nine one one at the clinic i better get back look at you doing the clinic thing again what started as the denny duquette memorial clinic Catherine broke more rules than all of us, but she was strategic about it. She understood how to play the game. I don't have time for games. Uh, Give Amelia, Owen, and Teddy back their jobs. I'll sell a percentage of my shares of Grace Loan, and I can pay you back everything. This isn't about money. Damn. That's when you realize it is so important for her to keep pursuing this breakthrough for Alzheimer's, that she's willing to sell part of her shares of Grace Loan, the hospital that is named after her dead sister. You know how many people are desperately waiting for help, and progress takes money. We have it. What are you suggesting? Do you want my firstborn? Worse. <laughs> Apologize. Oh, no, no, no. But she can do it. She can always rise above. Not that she needs to. Catherine just needs to calm down for a second. Her philosophy is to heal with love. Love does not heal. Science heals. Medicine and trained doctors heal. 100%. What are we talking about? I mean, she is a trained doctor. She's just happy. Your assistant isn't at her desk. I'm sure she'd call security. I'm here out of respect for Jackson. <laughs> Catherine? Catherine? Oh shit, oh shit, oh Catherine. shit, oh shit. It's her cancer. Can one character on the show be healthy and happy? I mean, I guess Sydney Heron is. Have you always been an ass or did it start when that girl left you? What are you talking about? Uh, fiance, Molly? Right? Ex fiance, and she didn't leave me. May I just confess something? I think I kind of have a thing for Quan. He's hot, he's proactive, he is really passionate about becoming a surgeon. Maybe sometimes a little too passionate. He's got some fight in him, and he's hot. What about the tumor on your spine? Do you know about that? I saw it on your scans. I do know about it. But Richard and Jackson don't, and you are not going to tell them. Is she going to die? Or is Meredith going to save her and then she'll forgive Meredith and they'll continue working on their breakthrough for Alzheimer's? Not Bailey said a patient was in the ceiling. Please tell me there's a translation for that. Blah, blah, blah. Proper name, place name, backstory stuff. Okay, I'm sorry, but I can't stop looking at Quan's biceps and the thickness of them. I want people to remember my name because of the advances I've made in medicine, for the risks that I've taken to save lives, for the first that I have achieved. I would think you, of all people, would understand that. And yet, Catherine is in Meredith's way. It's a blaring contradiction. Blah, blah, blah. Proper name, place name. Like, I'm sorry, look at that bicep. Is it just me? Am I just too horny? 
I am so single. But she needs a formal neck exploration and closure in the OR. Okay, we are headed straight there. Yep. Special thanks for helping my interns, Miranda. Yeah, you can go now. Yep, I got it from here. <laughs> Sydney, I love you, but they aren't your interns. Blah, blah, blah. Proper name, place name, backstory stuff. Okay, I need to stop. One day we got into an ugly fight and she drove away. She didn't even make it to the highway before she was hit by a reckless driver. And just like that, I was a stranger. Juan, if I could, I'd give you a hug with those biceps wrapped around me. <laughs> I've been taught to operate within a very specific specialty. Today, when something outside of that field went wrong, I didn't step back to look at the whole picture. I want you to take me through it all again and show me what I missed. It kind of reminds me of the time Richard and Christina operated in the dark when there was a power outage and they couldn't see what they were doing They couldn't find what they needed to find and then Richard literally asked Christina to listen to the heart I can't see then don't look you know what a healthy heart sounds like I got it I have my finger on the leak you made me a better doctor tonight dr. Weber Thank you. Oh, here you all are <laughs> in the best room in the hospital the room for improvement <laughs> And I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. The early bird does get the worm. But I really hope she stays for a while. Now we're gonna talk about it. I don't wanna get stuck in a wall. We had a moment where we felt terrible. We were just trying to not feel terrible. I think Jules just wanted to get it out of her system. Turning down fries and wine. Mm -mm. Let's put two and two together. I hear you. Oh, he. The stars <laughs> tonight. I really want them to be endgame. Please, Grace Anatomy writers. You should apply to Grace Sloan. I built a world class program, and you deserve to be in it. Even without you? No, because I'm getting my job back. You tell him, Miranda Bailey. Hi. Hi. Is everything. You're not going to Chicago. Oh, I'm Chicago. Everybody's kissing and everybody's living. You talked to my mom? I did. Uh -huh. Yeah, everyone can have their jobs back. And you'll continue the research? Yes, I will, but not here. Grace Sloan? You said we could have our jobs. You should take yours in Seattle and uh, the research will just go in a different direction. Wait, what? I'm confused. What does that mean for her? Is she going to continue her research in Seattle as well? Right after this is when I realized that my mic and my screen recording had stopped recording the audio. So I just stopped the video because I was so pissed off. <laughs> Which is why I didn't record an intro. But here we are. I really don't know what to make of that last conversation. It sounded kind of cryptic because Meredith explicitly told Amelia that she can get her job back in Seattle. But then she said that the Alzheimer's research might have to take a different direction. Now, I don't know what that different direction implies. It sounded kind of secretive, coded, and cryptic. I really don't know what this season has in store for us, but I'm pretty sure Catherine is going to put up a good fight, but Meredith is also going to put up a good fight. So will Bailey, and I guess we'll just have to wait to find out. But thank you for watching. Glad to be back on the Grey's Anatomy carousel. <laughs> I've said this before as well, but then I disappeared. Let's hope I can continue being on the carousel until the very end. Thanks for watching. Bye.